Uh, very good evening. Evening started, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Shay. Uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's indeed my proud privilege to welcome you again to another excellent evening edition of our Pont Vatan Let Us Speak series. Uh, today is again a very interesting topic. Uh, uh, in the interest shown by the participant clearly indicate the interest in the theme learning from a 10x sales growth story because everybody would like to grow 10x. Uh, before I introduce uh, the chairman, Mr. Balraman, I want to quickly tell you what are the next Pont Vatan event happening. That's uh, happening on the 27th. Uh, Again, interesting event. Uh, how digitalization is leading a shift in role of banks in supply of growth capital uh, to you as an individual or as a business owner. We got an outstanding panel there. We'll be discussing and uh, and is it being uh, moderated and facilitated by uh, Boston Consulting Group. Uh, I also want to tell you quickly. Uh, I know just a minute. I'll take. Uh, we also started a new series under the guidance of Mr. Balraman. That is. Uh, Startup India Challenges and Opportunities. Uh, this is now happening on the 26th hybrid model. Earlier, it was supposed to happen on 25th. Due to popular request, we are doing an MMA Management Center hybrid model. So do come and listen to Sinat Ravichandran, how he achieved great success in Agnigul Cosmos. He's going to be in conversation with V. Shankar, founder of CAN. Coming to today's event, as I mentioned, uh, we got outstanding panelists uh, uh, learning from a 10x sales growth story, uh, the Pankaj Seth, Vice President Insights, ST Media Limited. And we also have other distinguished guest of honor as a special invitees. Uh, uh, for this evening is Neeraj Swaroop, uh, former group head of retail banking, SDFC Bank, and Neeraj Chandra, business advisor. And we have Mr. Balraman, who is a mentor, advisor, past president of MMA, uh, going to be introducing the speaker. And let me have the, the proud privilege of introducing Mr. Balraman. Balraman is an MBA from IIM Ahmedabad and former MD of Pons. Uh, he was also former chairman of camps uh, and also independent director of Nokia, Mahindra, Well City, and many more companies. Uh, currently, he's on director of Del P TVS, India Nippon Electricals, uh, and the past president of MMA, not once, it's twice, two years. Over to you, Mr. Balraman, to introduce the speakers and set the context for the subject. Mr. Balraman. Uh, well, thank you. You have introduced the sp uh, speakers uh, already, group captain. So, all that I have to say is that uh, uh, Pankaj. See, uh, the ideator, uh, Pankaj volunteered to uh, speak on this idea. And, uh, you know, I have done one strange thing this time. Normally, I go through the presentations and I make sure that all the speakers are queued in, what each speaker will call and all the stuff. This time around, I have done none of that. The reason is I wanted to enjoy the suspense. You know, a 10x growth story. It's uh, unbelievable. It cannot be. It cannot be. So I wanted to savor and enjoy the presentation today. So I have just not listened to the story yet. I am very, very curious. All that I can tell you is uh, Pankaj is uh, uh, someone who is a go-getter, who is uh, 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 tireless, and he's extremely busy, but in spite of that, he has offered to speak. And about uh, Swaroop. Uh, Swaroop is... Uh, a perfect gentleman who combines uh, enormous EQ and enormous IQ. And uh, he has handled several successful roles, and the last of which was uh, regional chairman for Stan Chart in Southeast Asia, which tells you a lot about him because Stan Chart is a, a wonderful uh, banking organization. And I'm very proud to be a customer. And uh, Neeraj Chandra is a marketing wizard. He is a Chanakya of marketing. He is a thinker, non-stop thinker. He is someone from whom I learned a lot of my marketing. And uh, he is from Hindustan, Liver, Pons, Imami, and uh, a board member in a few organizations. Swarup, again, is a teacher, a professor of marketing. So let's listen to this uh, trio. And over to you, Pankaj. You are muted. Yeah, thank you, Balraman, sir. Is my uh, presentation visible, please? Yes. Okay. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, so, is, this is part of the Ponds Veteran Series, and we'll talk about learning from a 10x sales growth. Once. This band is covering my band. One second. I'll just try to figure out how to... Drag this box down. 
Sorry for this. I'm just trying to figure out how to drag this box down. Yep. There we go. There we go. So probably that was the Chinese influence of Zoom, but on a lighter note. So, so I'll start the first session. So I this is from my days in HDFC Life. I was the head of bank assurance there. I was the first uh, full-time head of HDFC Life bank assurance. Currently, I work with HD Media. My presentation, I will cover three facets. One is the sales growth story, how it unveiled. And the learnings from there. That's the second part that what drove the story, what drove the collective team effort of 10x sales growth and insights that you can use. That is our endeavor today to share insights with our young colleagues on this platform. I would advise and recommend that you take notes of anything which you find interesting, which you can apply. Uh, I would also advise that if there is something you find very relevant. You can even take a picture of that. You can refer to the presentation later, but you can also take a picture of the framework or any tips that you see on the screen. So the insights you can use will keep calling out. And there were also underlying organizational factors. So the foundations built by HDFC Life in its early years enabled the sales team to flourish in those years. So we'll also touch upon that. I will uh, then hand over the baton uh, to Neeraj Suroop and uh, then to Neeraj Chandra. The context setting first, HD, HDFC Life was the first life insurance company in the private sector to start operations in early 2000s when the sector opened up to private companies. The team that I headed, we took our sales from 37 crore to 375 crore over that two year period in the channel, which is called bank assurance channel. Bank assurance, as you can make out, is insurance distributed through a banking channel. I was the first full-time head earlier as part of the overall system. And the team, I, and with excellent support from all functions of the organization, we delivered in two years a 10x growth. This is the story of the stock price. Uh, so in the year that I got my ESOPs, uh, yeah, I got it at rupees 18. The stock today I checked it yesterday was 700 rupees. I sold a few of it a few years back to pay off my home loan, but I wish I had not sold it, but on a light, that was on a lighter note. But as you can make out over this 15, 17 years journey, the company continues to do well. And the bank assurance channel is a large part of the company's business now. So there were many learnings from that journey. And these learnings are relevant for all growth seeking companies and teams and startups, even existing companies and, seeing, and teams which are seeking growth. Some of you may be from a sales and marketing background. Some of you may be from other functions also. So some of these learnings here will apply to everybody because ultimately the company grows together. So what you can take away from today are insights that you can also use. So as I said earlier, I'd encourage you to take notes on thoughts which are coming, which you can apply in your context. And you will be best placed to judge that. This story was, while I'm telling the story, this is a story actually of teamwork. So it's a combined effort of the sales team that I led and all departments of HDFC life. All departments, because it's a collective effort, but I'm just telling the story on their behalf in that sense. Okay, moving further, what drove the growth? There were five large points which accelerated and enabled growth. We look at each of them one by one. First is around distribution. Distribution capacities, distribution capabilities, and energizing the distribution system. On the right, I've written some insights, I'll refer to it but the distribution was a big part of it. Second, product customization and fitments. Most of the products which were available were the same ones which were available for all channels, but some 
flourished well because they fitted well into that channel so sometimes we had to create customized products but mostly it was from the current repertoire but finding the right fitment and accelerating that so product third is sales team processes hard processes around targets managing those soft processes about people engaging them motivating them in a process driven way and technology the next was a sales leadership team how to structure it who are the manning it how do the role synergies work out well and the last was checks and balances like in cricket to win a match you of course have to score the runs but you also have to preserve your wicket so any good sales system needs checks and balances always without stifling innovation so we'll pick up learnings on that as well so first distribution capacities capabilities and energizing the distribution system the first is capacities more channels more people so we did a 2x on capacities more banking partners remember this was insurance and pension products sold through banks so from 2 to 5 the banking partners went up second is more people to sell our products internally from 20 in the previous year to 100 plus externally in the banking partner below 50 to start with and going up to 400 so more people selling products the internal one was a cost but the external one doesn't add cost to us remember it doesn't add fixed cost to us anything they sell they have a fee but they doesn't add fixed cost internal adds fixed cost capability build that's a 10x training on products on processes and the, this was led by our regional managers also trainers but the frontline regional managers were the forefront of training because that also projected them well they were the best skilled so less than 10 in the previous year to 100 plus sessions so training on followed by joint sales calls with the channel partners so capability build was a big part of energizing the channel and this is very important what's in it for me so the channel owner which is the top management of the bank what why would they tie up and why would they encourage this and then the down the line employee is something we did called sbp skill building program and it's a very interesting it was a skill building as in training but with a bit of a incentive thrown in uh, so that it was just compliant to the regulations but it was also an innovative way of motivating people so let's start with first the channel what's in it for me so what's in it for the top management of the bank the more they sold our products the more there was profits for them secondly the skill sets of their team went up because these were third party products typically banks had till that time been selling their deposits and their loans but these were third party products right so insurance is one mutual fund is another general insurance is another so that's a skill set which builds up for the middle management what's in it for me for the middle management a they achieve their targets which help them in their careers secondly because this was a priority of the top management to drive fee based income it got them visibility among top management so that for middle management counts a lot and that is something that our sales team also leverage smartly sbp was skill build building program so regulations at that time the rules which were laid down by rda did not allow us to give incentive monetary incentive to anybody in the bank employees uh, pool so what did we do so for everybody we did a training program in their training room or our training room for a set of performers who did well we did the same training or a little more value added training in a five star hotel and for the top one nicely we did it in a resort in goa in uti in jaipur because it was a skill building program so it was compliant but it also built a motivational factor right so innovating within the rules but still rewarding the performers and what's in it for the frontline again target achievement helps them in their careers visibility among the seniors sbp plus for the frontline insurance was a sector which was opening up 
subsequently for them to get get into even the bank insurance business of other banks or insurance companies it enabled their careers as well what we are saying not this was not mentioned in every dialogue but we have to be aware how to energize the channel and what works for the top management may not be exactly the same which works for front line they have some interlinkage but one has to address that be conscious of that oh okay, now energizing channel so one of the channels which is union bank one of our partners actually was less used to using selling third party products so there was the same set of people who would sell bank deposits bank loans so they are same people how do energize them we mod- followed the campaign model there campaign model is you don't sell it every day every week you go on and take a campaign so in a campaign model in a quarter remember a quarter is 13 weeks there was a concentrated burst of 2 to 3 weeks in which a lot of focus went in so in that 2 to 3 weeks the entire quarter's target was achieved so it was a campaign model and the rest of the 10 11 weeks they were free to sell what they were selling and service what they were servicing so for that concentrated burst in this diagram that you see the arrows all the arrows had to f- work very smoothly only then the last arrow facing the customer works top to top alignment instructions down the line front line front line alignments so a lot of planning so two by two there is that two organization two levels so that's a campaign model a second chain partner a very amazing institution and bank college dc bank they was used to selling third party products because they had already a dedicated channel sales channel strategy so there it was more about energizing that channel so our model was the pjp model permanent journey plan this is a model which the unilever system the ponds lever system has been using for years so that adapted to a bank assurance environment so the table on the left bottom so if it's a category a branch the frontline executive of ours would do weekly visit and his manager would do fortnightly visit so if it's category b branch a little less frequently but it is templated and on the right side if you see goal of a visit every visit had a specific agenda initially it was just to put a foot in the door to to engage with the brand the branch manager with the team then was joint planning right and then ki what do we want to do which customers how when what should we do to engage then was joint sales and smartly when the sales used to happen the 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 respective manager in the location would spread that word to other branches ki so and so branch is sold so why don't you also sell so spreading that news after sale happens right it creates energizing because that channel was a very efficient channel in distributing third party so it helped us build momentum and then if there was a top up some new product a new scheme that was on a requirement basis but different strategy to energize different channel going further to product customization so as i said hdfc bank for the mass channel for where they are able to reach to a lot of people the products which fitted very well was children plan and pension plan so most people who were in the 30s would have kids so planning for their kids education so it's a good saving plan it gives multiple benefits and for people let's say who are in the late 40s and 50s a pension plan right si standing instruction so auto debits every month every month every six months so reasonable the templatized approach for the hni focused sub channel within the same bank a wider range of products including short payment duration some of the hnis were running their own businesses so let's say if they are making good profits in 2 3 years and they are not sure about what will happen subsequently so products customized for them the large message here is customization union bank again a very amazing bank with its own footprint strengths had a very strong focus on small and medium enterprises small medium enterprises revolve a lot around the key man the m the senior person the md chairman so ensuring that person via something called as key man insurance because if something happens to him or her it it is affects the the company as well as the the family 
So SME focused product, of course, they also distributed and sold other products, but playing to the strengths. HDFC Limited, which is a home loans company, amazing, that sells the market leader in home loans. So simple protection plan with the home loan. So if you are taking a home loan, then you can take us a life insurance to cover that home loan. So very simple pay paperwork, including declaration of good health. So, so it's flowed very smoothly. And even now this continues to do very well. So while the underlying suite of products available for every channel was the same, but what flourished well in different channel because of fitment was a little different. And that's what we scaled up to build velocity. And over time, this channel specific strategy also helped the company in the online sales channel where again, HDFC Life is doing very well. I'm just gonna take a 20, 30 second pause for the audiences. Hopefully you've got some thoughts and you've taken notes. So put down some ideas on distribution leverage because you are in very important positions and you've taken out the time on a Saturday evening to come and attend this session. So any ideas, one, two, three, we covered about sales channels, we talked about capacity, energizing, capability build, anything which comes to your mind, note it down, please. Thank you. Moving to the next enablers of the 10X clothes was about the sales team and the sales leadership team. And all, in, let's go one by one. The sales team processes, the hard processes, you know, for team efficiency, first, the target focus, absolutely. Target delivery, target reminders, automated through emails, through SMS, team SMS. So there's target focus. Alongside is target enablement. Pursuit of the enabler, like you saw the training width was the enabler, right? Participation rate of various branches was an enabler. Planning for campaign for next month or next quarter was an enabler. Because if you keep an eye on the enabler and you have the right enabler, the target will happen. So it's not just on the target, but also on the enabler. So once the enabler, so in case of let's say home loans out of, if X percentage of home loans were getting covered with a life, tomorrow it's X plus Y your revenue will naturally go up. But if you only focus on the revenue, that's not the way to drive results. You have to focus on the enabler and the revenue both. Second, team meeting or team mail templates. So meetings were there, also monthly mails were there, which captured two facets. One is the goal setting and reviewing part, which is natural because sales systems have goals and targets and review processes. Second is around success stories. You know, success stories, making them go around, challenges faced, solving it collectively, that builds team chemistry, that cross-pollinates ideas, but that it's sort of been a, a, an exception was weaved into the template itself on how to run the meeting, how to run the monthly mail. Incentives with good payouts. Uh, try and move this band around if it does. Sales linked, output linked, and as well as role linked. So, because if the role is to energize more branches, then one of the target, one of the incentive components is how many of the bank branches are delivering revenue, right? Because if that you drive, your sales number will happen. If you don't build this check, what happens is the person will only keep focusing on the topmost branch and topmost seller. So you have to put in targets on the enablers also and the incentives and good incentives. People could earn, you know, 30, 50, 70, 100% of their C2C via uh, pure incentives as well. So that is incentives with good payouts. Let's see a little closely some of these. Team meetings. So sales review, achievements versus targets, absolutely. Very, very critical. What worked and what didn't work? Anytime there's a target which is achieved, yeah, simply what worked, what didn't work. It just reinforces success formula. Second, 
discussions around sames enablement it always helps everybody a guy who's at 90% of achievement can achieve 110% a guy who's at 70% achievement can achieve 100% by learning from each other so cross functional so we used to invite other functional heads hr it actuarial so if there was some enablement support needed from them and they were very very supportive cross pollination cross pollination of successes and challenges this also keeps the dynamics of a team good otherwise sometimes sales meetings end up being the top guy being applauded and the guy who's not doing so well you know getting pressure pressure should be on everybody of course top guy should be appreciated more but pressure should be on everybody to raise the bar so cross pollinating successes and asking everybody to share a challenge because that shows that nobody is perfect so sales enablement and discussions around that help because people also hesitate if i am handling north and somebody is handling south if i am not doing well he will hesitate to give me idea saying i don't know whether he'll like it or not like it but if in the team it's discussed okay you did well what worked so the guy who's not doing so well can also learn from that so it creates so enablement discussions sales planning absolutely targets and enabling plans and team bonding over meals evening breaks etc the soft processes soft processes this acronym that you see on the left crispy is our own acronym we just wrote it down you know we it's a way to memorize and i'll build on each of these we were able to cut attrition it was a high attrition industry by 30% we were able to cut it down width which means the number of people receiving this this positive stroke is important so there's growth i'll go through these one by one growth growth actually has various facets people think it's just becoming you know vertical growth no your designation could change corporate account manager senior corporate account manager right if you did a certain level of performance over a time role expansion you are handling five branches you can handle 10 right of course promotion was there that you know but promotions can only happen at a cycle so there are other facets of growth recognition recognition among peers in family circle also so sometimes used to give you know incentives also so spot incentive top guys for the month a fancy car will go take the family for a good lunch or dinner at a good restaurant so good car goes there it's publicly visible this is just one of the ideas along with the monetary part we did the monetary part but there were other facets of recognition also which we have to be conscious of and how to leverage which fits within the culture also in front of seniors online offline earnings sales linked role linked so we one person was posted in a posted in a lucky branch of one of our partners he was attached to that which used to sell a lot because of the client base so he was earning a lot of incentive and and which is good but with that by capping that incentive that same money we were able to incentivize 15 other people and the one who was doing well continued to do well because he was already earning a lot so caps so the underlined part on the screen what you see i think we did which were innovative which we the team with support of our various functions brought to the table skill building technical managerial in meetings on the board boss context here is the hr insight is that a person joins a company but leaves a boss that's not my insight that's i agree with that line of thinking but hr professional share this so it's very important that each boss or each manager is the best that he or she can be and hence keeping on building them so managerial skills leadership culture so our ceo then mr satvalekar used to say leaders build leaders so keep building down the line as well and feel good celebrations around target achievements if you have a high value sale you know today it's somebody tomorrow it's somebody else but it keeps the feel good adrenaline going right moving for the incentives you see the first row of the incentives common and sets common parameter sales versus targets you look at the next row channel productivity is common then the role based differences start coming in so regional manager he also gets incentive depending on how many of his team are earning because if they are earning it starts off a very positive cycle 
as a manager it's not just on the sale but on people that also forces the regional manager to invest time in each person otherwise under pressure many times the team leader will invest time with only the top performers to drive results because he is under or she is under so much short from pressure but this way there's an incentive for him to also or him or her to also invest time in his or her team so that more of them earn the incentives and once they started earning incentives and came up the productivity curve it kicks off a virtuous cycle which enables which is one of the factors in the 10x right channel profitability for the national account manager continuing further on the fourth one is sales leadership team how is it structured initially bank assurance was incubated in the main channel and then separated out what was that time called alternate channels right initially all roles were merged line and sale but as it grew line role regional role and national account management was split out even pounds and levers had a similar structure sales teams and the category teams many of the e-commerce companies also have that the people right recruitment right fitment right onboarding clear roles and strong leadership paradigms and i'll cover on that common vision common values leadership focus so good people and manning important roles this is an important paradigm again the role definition what's the various people's roles in a hierarchy so simple rule the last person in the chain which is a local person he has to deliver or she has to deliver next four weeks numbers and not just this week's number one level above him regional has to deliver this month but has to be conscious of delivering the next four months also hence the building people building relationship unlocking enablers and the national role has to deliver this quarter but also has to keep a constant eye on the next four quarters that way it sets off a virtuous cycle and as you saw the incentive schemes also aligned in that direction so this this was the fourth one and then again i'll take a 30 second pause please write down any ideas that have come around sales team leverage which is about how do you run your meetings how do you engage people the grass b formula Uh, the leadership team leaders building leaders any thoughts which are there which you think you can apply for your sales growth because all of you are the key of today's economy and tomorrow's economy thank you the last growth driver very important checks and balances why is this important because there are rules there are regulations there's a brand also you have to be very conscious about and future sales are all dependent on how you do today right so hdfc life had checks pre the, before the sale happened there were pre operations during operations post operations there were checks and balances hdfc bank our partner and similarly union bank they had their own regulatory compliance customer complaints and escalation sops and very strong financial discipline short term and long term if you are adding a cost catalyst cost versus a structural cost for example giving more margin to a distributor that becomes a structural cost but running a skill building program is a catalyst cost you do it once and then you move out it is not recurring cost so structural cost versus catalyst cost right and every sales system needs these check balances to but without stifling innovation and growth i gave some examples earlier so like as they say in cricket preserving wicket is as important as scoring run but there were underlying found organizational factors because the foundations of the organization cross functional across functions and i now move to that the four of them strategic the strength of strategic partners strong vision and values and strong culture of company so parents hdfc limited and the joint venture partner standard life they brought brand startup support very clear understanding on the big picture right and then there were partners like hdfc bank and other specialist partners in the area of technology recruitment advertising but the two parents brought a lot of the foundations on how to build similarly this is a very important paradigm the dahi handi of bombay everybody in this picture is focused only on two things a how to break that dahi handi and be safety of their team so the stronger the nimble people are at the top and the strong strength is below and if you notice carefully 
surrounding them are a lot of people with their hands raised who are offering buffer so that there's no injury if, if in case somebody falls so so while the sales guys at the top delivering but it's actually the whole organization focused on the same goal right so that was the focus there as well a vision which was clear inspiring and widely cascaded so this what you see was written in 2002 it's got adapted slightly but that time the vision was to be india's most successful and admired life insurance company then there were some words there and it ended with most obvious choice for all sorry that's a typo choice for all values which then enabled how to achieve the vision integrity customer people innovation trust and even joy and simplicity you know how to enjoy the journey and that was a very very important facet because it's a long journey and you have to enjoy the journey so values widely owned by the leadership roles and shared across the company this inspired and converged teams across levels and functions so that everybody was rowing in the same direction or the same goal and enjoying the journey and supporting each other like the dahi ande right and as this us uh, founding ceo and md mr satvalkar said that my job was to find the right people and create the right vision this is deepak satvalkar founding ceo and md of course he i did a lot of value to all of us and gave us a lot of vision but this is one of his statements so the importance of vision and value strong company culture collegial culture you know including lighter mood before meetings during some time meeting shared lunch room where the ceo of the company would be having lunch with somebody two levels three levels below him informally same lunch canteen lunch right culture that enabled learning right hiring i came from a i didn't come from financial services but i came from unilever and pons so brought marketing and sales skills there were people who came brought technology skills right focus on results and excellence so people were yes results were there every person was under pressure but they were also enabled yes in a rare case people were also shipped out but the focus on results was also backed with the equal focus on enablement and excellence good balance of tech tech and processes good balance of functional excellence and cross functional team wins so culture is very very was very very important in that journey which is a foundation of the company right as i showed you the sales guy may be in a relay race running the last leg but many functions many factors lay the foundation right so there's a very interesting american proverb in this context that culture is strategy for breakfast right so this is american corporate proverb culture is strategy for breakfast so while strategy is important culture is extremely important as well and that was our experience there in that period strong focus on core pillars you'll be wondering where cricket has come right just like in cricket the pillars of a successful team let's say team india over the last decade is of course strong bowling batting fielding and fitness good team spirit because everybody is rowing in the same vision and talent pipeline right because if somebody gets injured or retires then tell pillars have to be clear so the comp- the overall company was very focused on these pillars that you see customer employees technology and cost and 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 the checks and balances are built into all of them so these were the clear pillars and these were manifested with various things like targeted products need based selling employees again i took you through that grace b point tech leverages included benchmarking global locate not technology for technology sake but technology for value sake value to the customer value to the business cost efficiencies sharp risk assessment processes etc for example i have written here two screens at that time in one of the processes needed a screen which was bigger than the standard lcd monitor right now the second size this is almost 15 years back 10 to 15 years back were far more costly so how do you innovate so they put two screens next to each other and if i am not mistaken in some of the permutation combinations they took two screens and made them vertical and i put them next to each other so in a cost effective manner solve the business requirement right so innovation there and that's where the, when the culture is enabling that these kind of breakthroughs do happen i'll take a 30 second pause again on organizational factors the founding teams your culture the vision and values right what is it that any ideas that 
have struck you that you can apply in your uh, organization, right? As uh, to enable growth for yourself, for your teams, right? Thank you. So I am now heading towards the end of my module. So to summarize, in a two-year period, we took the team that I headed, 37 crore to 375 crore. While I'm presenting the story, it was a combined effort of my entire sales team and all the departments of HDFC life growing together. Stock, ESOP, got it at rupees 18, actually got the share at rupees 18. So essentially the company is doing well, they've done well. This 700 is the recent price, but the company has continued to do well, right? So what drove the sales growth? Five big factors. First around distribution. So distribution, capacities, capabilities, energizing, product, customizations and fitment, not just creating new products, existing, many were existing products, right? Some customizations, sometimes some tweaking on processes, sales team processes, hard processes, targets, meetings, right? Enablement, soft processes, growth, recognition, earning, right? Technology leverage everywhere. Sales leadership team, how do you create the roles which synergize, fitment, leaders build leaders and checks and balances. That was a summary of what the sales team achieved. How are the foundations of the organization or the strength of the strategic partners, a strong foundation of vision and values. What do we want to be and how will we get there? A strong company culture, collegial, uh, cooperative, excellence oriented and strong focus on core pillars. What are the pillars on which we're going to build this organization? So around customer, employee, tech, cost, brand and reputation all is there weaved into the customer because brand is very, very important in any, in any uh, institution, especially financial. That brings me to an end of my module. I now hand over the baton uh, to Neeraj Saru. Uh, he was over to Neeraj uh, now. Thank you. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, I trust everybody found his presentation extremely uh, relevant and detailed about how to build a sales, uh, uh, an excellence in sales, uh, the way HDFC uh, life did at that point of time. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Badraman and uh, Group Captain for introducing me earlier. Uh, just for the audience, I've had a few opportunities in my career to work uh, and be part of high growth organizations, uh, initially at Ponds, uh, which was a high growth uh, company and uh, where I learned my sales and marketing uh, apart from other management and leadership skills. Subsequently, I had the opportunity to work at HDFC Bank in its in the initial days uh, when it grew uh, rapidly and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Uh, and then later on in my career, I also had the opportunity to work with Standard Chartered Bank, uh, which in India grew quite rapidly despite being a fairly mature business. But today I've chosen to talk about the HDFC Bank story, partly because it links into uh, Pankaj's uh, story uh, you know, where there was a partnership, uh, but also because uh, HDFC Bank continues to be an organization uh, that has outperformed not only its uh, peers in India, uh, but globally. And for me personally, uh, HDFC Bank was a period where uh, I learned most of my banking and that stood me in good stead uh, when I worked with Standard Chartered Bank later on as well. I have about uh, eight to, to 10 minutes, about 10 minutes, I think. And uh, obviously that's not a lot of time to go into detail of what happened at HCC Bank in that period, but I hope to Neeraj, give you a flavor. Neeraj, we are doing very well in time, so you can take 15 minutes. Okay, anyway, whatever I'll do. Uh, but yes, it will give me some time to give you a flavor of what happened at the bank at that period of time. Uh, okay, so to start with, um, uh, Pankaj, if I can have the next slide, please. This is a slide of uh, some numbers at that point of time. Uh, 
it is just to draw get your attention honestly i mean to and demonstrate that there was rapid growth during that period of time uh and i've chosen a few uh, parameters uh product line this is in retail banking business uh the first four parameters are specific to retail banking the last three parameters are for the overall bank so in retail banking in a period of about 6 years the product lines as in independent pnl lines not add on products like debit cards or phone banking uh, but products where a customer could initiate a relationship with the bank grew rapidly from about 4 to 16 channels which were banks uh, branches and atms went on to include internet mobile and phone banking uh branches themselves grew from about 57 to 467 which is 9x uh, this maths is wrong because i remembered it more as 550 when i made the slide and then i took the numbers from uh, the annual report and it was on march 31st it is 467 customers grew 20x employees as a bank grew about 9x revenues grew 11x the stock price of course followed because profitable uh, profits actually grew faster than 11x the purpose of the slide is only to say this was a rapid period of growth uh, uh, next slide uh, pankaj and what you some of you might uh, realize and be thinking that at the initial stage of a business uh, growth is rapid and that is true so the context to the growth is is that uh, again uh, everybody knows that new private bank licenses were given out in 95 96 the bank started its operation and these were the early years of uh, of the private banks growth the the opportunity to disrupt was built into the license itself so the the structure of the industry was that you had psu banks and you had foreign banks psu banks uh, were good to a point uh, but they were not marketing or customer oriented in the manner that foreign banks were and therefore private banks could be the foreign banks were highly profitable uh, and dominating in the richer uh, high revenue businesses uh, so that was the structure but there was an opportunity to disrupt having said that the product category was such that it was not as if you made yourself available people would pile in because uh, opening accounts is sticky uh, there has to be a strong enough reason for people to move from one bank to another it tends to be relationship oriented especially where corporates are concerned and most importantly in banking as it continues to be even today there is a significant difficulty to differentiate largely due to regulatory reasons so for example uh, a savings account was completely undifferentiated at the time uh, uh, when the bank launched in fact even fixed deposits were undifferentiated because interest rates were capped at that point of time they got freed up only later so a current account or a saving account was the same in every bank and it would be very difficult to differentiate as would be if you were to start thinking about loans at least traditional loans in banking and in nbfcs and in all financial service uh, lending business especially in the early years the key challenge is to raise funding because you have capital and you're in the business of money if you don't leverage your capital you can't lend and therefore you need to raise deposits and you got to raise them at a cost and and uh, with enough stickiness for it to be able to lend to be able to make money and the second element is is to manage the risk uh, because any loss of capital not only means that you become vi- non viable but your ability to la- leverage for deposits also goes down because you have a cap on what multiple you can take on the capital you have so if you lose capital you have to shrink your balance sheet so in the initial stages of building a bank raising deposits is key 
which comes to the issue of brand and even pankaj touched upon it because nobody is going to give you his money if the uh, trust is not important and uh, fortunately for hdfc bank with the parentage of hdfc limited which was a trusted brand uh, was uh, was helpful and you would realize uh, at the time in 95 8 banking licenses were given uh, five of them were to uh, banking institutions you know hdfc bank icici uti idbi uh, yeah seven licenses were given four of these were the institution and those are only four which have survived the other three which were centurion times and uh, and um, uh, gtb global trust have not existed so uh, indusind was the eighth one sorry so indusind is the only other one that has survived but brand is important competition was uh, not there from psu banks and uh, and the foreign banks well foreign banks to an extent but there were eight licenses given at the same time so the new competition was strong for the same deposits and uh, getting new customers so this is the context that uh, you uh, you uh, uh, had in the years uh, towards the end of 90 time so the key challenge was to get customers fast not only get customers fast but get them of quality you also had to differentiate because everybody was targeting the same quality customers uh, next slide sorry for kanch so what was the broad strategy at that point of time uh the the first part of the strategy was to differentiate and how do you differentiate when you do not have uh, you have a regulatory environment which does not allow you to differentiate Uh, you had to find your area of focus, and I would talk about a few of those. Uh, uh, so first, the target segment. So uh, uh, if you take corporate, if you take corporates, large corporates, a new bank cannot deal with because it does not have the size of the balance sheet to be able to give the size of loans that they would look at. Which means most new banks and exist even today when banks. Uh, startup uh, you focus on sme segments smes from a banking perspective tend to be riskier uh, especially again we are talking about 20 years ago when the quality of uh, disclosures and financials was not so easy uh, so on it so something went wrong sorry the city gave on okay so uh, so the bank uh, focused on uh, what were cash management products for corporates and short term transaction lending products uh, specifically for example hdfc bank in about 2 years 3 years cornered all the transaction banking accounts of the capital market players which is the brokers so the proposition in 20 years ago that we realized differentiated a private sector bank like hdfc bank was anywhere banking which we take for granted today at that time in a psu bank if you had an account in branch a your customer could not deposit a check in branch b and get instant credit it would go through clearing or you could not access your account from branch b to withdraw money you would need specific approvals etc for the small business segment the anywhere banking Uh, became an opportunity for the bank to focus on and to build uh, a large current account cash management business similarly geography uh, some of you might recall if you were working at that time that people like icic bank idb bank etc went and opened branches abroad uh, hdfc bank and till today remains focused on the fact that it believes that there is enough opportunity within the indian market uh, and there is no value add or a differentiation in going uh, international and so on and so forth so hcc bank remained focused on on the target segments it went after in retail it was going after the urban middle class which was the obvious segment at that point of time and of course subsequently it expanded its its uh, segments the other part of the strategy was to 
to grade the risk up slowly. So which meant you started with uh, deposits, but you had to do loans to make money. So you did secured loans, and then you did unsecured loans. You did unsecured loans, which had more evidence, and then you did pure unsecured loans, which had less, less uh, information. And of course, you then priced to match that appetite, but you did that over a period of years. The one I want to talk about uh, even more is the is this bit about capability build out, and that's always a, ch a challenge for leadership. That how what do you do first? I mean, do you build a customer base and then you build capacity to service them? You or you build capacity and then you fill it up with customers, and so on. But in a high where you knew for a startup organization that the opportunity was big uh, as it did with a private bank license in a, in a new uh, entrant scenario, uh, you could afford to do a cap capability build out simultaneously. That of course made it important that you executed well and you executed with clarity, but you had to not only build out products and product builds out means everything from the systems, the processes, the people that had to be done along that. So in that period, for example, and you saw the number of people going up from 1,000 to 9,000, and that was only in the bank's roles. Uh, there was a subsidiary sales company, which was also having another 10,000 people. The HR team was, was issuing 100 to 150 appointment letters a day, which meant they were probably interviewing uh, to start with 500 people every day. So it was that kind of capability build out that had happened for the growth to be sustained. Uh, customer acquisition, uh, I didn't put it as number one, but it was key. Uh, it was, I didn't put it as number one because it had to follow uh, a strategy around products, around credit, around uh, capability in the organization, but it was key because that's what's going to drive the revenue. And I'm going to talk about it in my next slide, so I will not talk about it here. Finally, uh, driving efficiency. Because as you build out, uh, there was this danger that your costs could exceed how you were pacing your revenue. So pacing revenue to cost was extremely important. Also, therefore, you had to keep your costs low because you were, you were in a build out. So the head office of the HDHC bank operated from a rundown warehouse for the first five years. Then it moved into lower parallel uh, it, was a, it was a very humble head office uh, and, uh, and each branch, and even today, uh, HCC Bank branches are not anything to admire. They are functional, they are, they are uh, cost effective, but that is important. Because if you spend before you could build revenue, uh, you would run out of capacity to build capability across all that you needed to do for growth. So it had to be simultaneous, but those were the five key elements of strategy that the leadership focused at that time. Next slide, please, Pankaj. Uh, on specifically on customer acquisition and cross sell, and Pankaj has gone through a, a detail on what all it goes to building an effective sales organization. I have highlighted two parts uh, uh, beyond what I think uh, was relevant for HCC Bank. One was this bit about building upfront quality. Uh, in the banking business, you can acquire customers, but in all businesses, you can acquire customers, but all customers are not profitable. And then you spend a lot of energy in, in, um, in weeding out or managing customers in the customer profitability metrics, et cetera. But if you build screens and quality upfront, uh, you can, uh, you can both reduce cost and be more effective. So one of the big decisions early on was not to go after the DSA road. In that time, Citibank had pioneered very effective use of the DSAs. They didn't have a large branch organization. And uh, that was a temptation. Uh, HDFC Bank went uh, and set up a sales company, which is a 100 person owned sub uh, subsidiary, uh, which was managed by bank managers and therefore uh, quality was better. Uh, incentive structures were linked not on acquisition, but on activation 
which meant that if somebody opened a savings account with 5,000 rupees and withdrew it, did, withdrew it in the first three months, no incentive was paid to the sales guy. So the money had to remain. Uh, and the third part was that sales and service were merged effectively. I mean, everybody talks about it, but every service call uh, after a service call had a sales end and there was incentive for the service person to cross sell. The cross sell itself was built with intelligence. Uh, HDFC Bank was an early start on getting a data warehouse set up, which not only told you what was the customer revenue, uh, but a, a construction of a customer profitability, including how much times he transacted with you, which is the cost, uh, and profitability by branch, by channel, uh, which gave you uh, a much better insight of how to how. Uh, to know who is doing how well. And then uh, because you had the data warehouse, you could run campaigns and, uh, and uh, which were driven by what uh, was working and what was not working. Pankaj touched about channel rewards. Channel rewards were on a balanced scorecard basis. So you could tune up insurance uh, cross sell if you thought that was more profitable for the bank or you could tune it down if you felt that your savings accounts uh, numbers were dropping. So you had a balance scorecard uh, method. Pankaj, uh, my last slide, please. So I'm sensitive that I've, I have taken up a fair amount of time, but I wanted to summarize as to, uh, and I was thinking hard as to what were my three big learnings from what I saw at HTC Bank in those uh, years that I was with the bank. There are moments that capability build out has to be rapid and simultaneous and not sequential. It is contextual. It is contextual because when you know you have a business opportunity, uh, you can do that. Having said that, it requires tremendous clarity of strategy because you are putting investments up ahead. Uh, you are not waiting to see results. You have to have the confidence that you uh, are building that out. Also capability, while I've mentioned about other things, uh, it includes capability of the balance sheet. So you have to simultaneously build your balance sheet because in banking business, that is, uh, uh, is quite key. Learning number two, you have to build profitability as a culture in, in your organization from day one. Uh, today, a lot of businesses do manage to have, and we're seeing that in the, in the uh, internet space, especially. Uh, you first grow, get customers, and then you become profitable. One, I don't think it still applies to banks. It can apply to banks because as you write off losses, you write off capital, and you, your capital is your raw material, and therefore you do not have the wherewithal to grow. So you have to remain profitable at all times. Also because you're borrowing and raising liabilities from lenders, other lenders, including depositors, a non-profit making entity becomes very uh, dangerous. So what IGFC Bank did right was that every decision was checked for profit, profitability. It didn't have to be profitable in year one. For example, a credit card business takes three years to break even, but every customer that came in had to be prof could be profitable in three years was the check. And finally, uh, execution decides the winner. Uh, that's my uh, learning, and that is not just from HCFC Bank. Uh, as Pankaj said, culture trumps strategy every day. I add to that, execution execution trumps strategy any day. So you, if you execute, you build day one for quality, for the right purpose, and for the long term, uh, you will win. So those are my learnings. Thank you for this opportunity. I am now going to pass on to the other Neeraj. Uh, by the way, I was just reflecting when Pankaj is doing this introduction that Pankaj, Neeraj and Neeraj all mean the same in Sanskrit. So anyway, we'll, we'll let that be and see over to you. Neeraj Chandra, you are muted.
Neeraj, Chandra, you have gone off the screen. Neeraj, Chandra. Group captain, is he on the... Hello. Where is Neeraj? Hello. He has muted himself, actually, so we talked to him on phone. Is he cut off? No, no, he's there. He's, uh... Something wrong with this connection? Anyway, until he comes, uh, the, uh, Neeraj Sarop, you made a very good point that uh, execution is the most important uh, in business. And uh, I, I think it's a very, very uh, important point for us to remember in India because uh, we do have a lot of plans, uh, you know, whether it is a state government or a central government. And uh, the, the difference, uh, why the results are so uh, disappointing compared to the plan or the idea we start out with, I think has, can be laid on the door of uh, poor execution. You know, the execution, I, it's very, very important for us to, in, in a, I think we should do a few more sessions uh, through MMA on uh, how do you execute well? You know, I think it's important to focus on this and, uh, you know, have collective discussions so that the Indian business at large can learn and implement. And just to see the thought, uh, I mean, obviously it is about uh, tracking and MIS and rigor, but it is also to do with culture. Uh, you know, so I'm linking the two because people have to not accept uh, solutions which are not end-to-end -end from a customer uh, perspective and, uh, you know, and, and of quality. So it is all linked in in some manner. And, and culture has a lot to do with uh, leadership. I'm, I'm a bit surprised that uh, neither you nor Pankaj uh, uh, talked about leadership. Uh, you know, I, I happen to know uh, I, I, your bank chairman, uh, Yapuri. Yeah, right? Aditya and Deepak. And yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, Deepak and also Satwalekar. I mean... Uh, Satwalekar, that's true. Yeah, see, he is uh, now in Coimbatore, I think. He's uh, part of the Isha. Yeah. Uh, yeah, disciple group, and whenever he used to travel in those days, uh, I mean, uh, uh, there were uh, direct flights from Bombay to Coimbatore started sometime, but before that, he used to come through Chennai both ways, and he, he used to stop by for a meal with me. And uh, you know, a very humble man, but very clear headed and uh, very human, and, and a very ch charming person, wasn't he? Yes, admirable, very admirable. Yeah. You know, somebody I look up to as, um, yeah, he's, you're right, he's so humble and so uh, uh, real otherwise and uh, and such a competent manager. Very true. And so was Aditya Puri. I mean, a man with uh, total clarity, total focus, <clears throat> and always putting the job ahead of uh, himself. Yeah, very true. As, so uh, to what extent was leadership uh, the main factor in the growth of uh, the insurance business and also the banking business. Paramount, sir. I mean, I we didn't. I think both Pankaj didn't kind of mention it specifically, mm -hmm. but uh, when we talk about culture or we talk about uh, even this uh, decisions around capability building and execution, it was the clarity of the leadership uh, thought uh, that gave all of that. Uh, so at least a commercial bank and I think the insurance company also is about strong leadership and a lot of soldiers who follow a leader. Uh, and uh, both Deepak and Aditya in this case were outstanding leaders. I mean, uh, Deepak Satwalekar, both Deepaks and Aditya, outstanding leaders. And, and uh, I think Neeraj Chandra is back. Uh, Ch Chandra, are you there? Yes, Mr. Balraman, I'm back. Yeah. I somehow got kicked out and uh, now I'm back. 
technology <laughs> decides what we do technology decides what is there i think the profundity of what neeraj said that all of us uh, pankaj me and him share the same meaning is what set it off yeah. um, <laughs> but i think technology in these times, times. Thank you, Pankaj, for the opportunity to share along with you and Neeraj, and thank you, Mr. Balraman and MMA, for uh, having me here on something which I really enjoy. Uh, you know, growth is for me a personal passion, and what makes this even more delightful is that some parts of what I'm going to talk about, actually a lot of it, is anchored in markets around Chennai, and. has significantly strong roots into what i did at ponds in chennai uh you know the thought of 10x growth is a heady one but very often we aspire for it and falter and therefore i'd like to share with you a space where 10x growth has been seen but more importantly i'd like to pull out some key pivots of learning which enable us to do more of it um and therefore pankaj next now this particular case is located in the space of sashes the simple shampoo sachet uh, around and really somewhere around the mid 80s when these things were bubbling up uh the shampoo market was a very small market very narrow penetration levels of around 5 to 10% and people were using 3 drops of shampoo or 3 ml per year so you can imagine how clean our hair used to be because of shampoos and really the shampoo sachet introduction is what set the market going and transformed it i'm not going to repeat the numbers but you see the difference but what i'm going to see is try to pull out some of the things which made this happen through the experience of shampoo sachets and through other low unit price packs pankaj next the first thing which shampoos did and shampoos had been existing in a sachet for some time was really pump up distribution and this pumping of a distribution meant that if you were going to 100 outlets you wanted to go to 500 so in chennai for example if you were covering 5000 outlets you had to do 25000 outlets within 6 months to a year and you know increasing distribution is like trying to increase your height very difficult it doesn't happen and therefore this challenge wasn't just a challenge of will there was a lot of structural shift which were had to be done which is really try to reach you know not the stores but the hole in the wall and the hole in the wall which typically had bamboo plantains uh, sticking around there and you wanted to reach that kind of thing for selling shampoos which at the time the guy never sold and therefore experiments like different kinds of cycle units and zillions of other things were done to drive that so pumping up distribution was a very big part of this exercise uh and the other thing which was there and pankaj next the very often in the case of shampoo sachets the product existed and there was a big shift which took place in other ways but in some of the other categories it was a different story so ponds used to sell ponds in a cold cream jar for a long time and very successfully but there was a big shift and i think the the technical team people like sham in uh, ponds somehow reduced the size of the ponds jar to a thimble size and you can see it the fingers indicate how small it was i mean barely you could pull out the cream from inside it as such and this product innovation drove a lot of thing by pulling down the price to 1/5 or 1/7 of what other things were so a second component of this kind of growth was a dramatic improvement or a shift in product uh now when you look at it from there and take a look at what happens because of this so in the first year and i was coincidentally talking to the person who launched the first thing on the right hand side which is vaseline and he said in his first year he sold more of this pack than his entire capacity of other packs right 
And so if we look at the next slide, the next big challenge was of getting things to shift dramatically in the manufacturing area. Right? And I just let me give you two, three little examples of what happened. Uh, one was, how do you make these little, little bottles, which at numbers, which are 10 to 20 times more than what you otherwise did? Not only in terms of number of packs, they started exceeding the total volumes by one, two of other, by once or twice more that of the rest of the pack. So really re-gearing up manufacturing capacity and innovating there was a big part of it. Similarly, look at costs. The first machine which makes shampoo sachets came at a cost of that time at around 25 lakhs. But within a decade, you could get machines through innovation, which was at one sixth of the cost at six times the capacity. Another indicator of this was that over the last 25 years, and I'm talking of a long period of time, the cost of a sachet has remained in the zone plus minus a certain amount of two rupees. Huge shift and therefore huge manufacturing things made this kind of thing possible. Let's take a look at the next level. And here I'm going to draw from another small unit pack, which was there. And this I'm going to the food space. So impulse purchase by kids running out of school is something which gives you a lot of growth. At least started to give a lot of growth. And you can't get that growth until you level off with these consumers. And therefore you had to understand how do you attract these consumers? And this example of these kids sweetly looking at a shop outside the school where he's very insightfully put the table at his level, at the level of these kids, gives you an idea of how deep you had to think and activate your products in this. Uh, this is just a little example. There's much, much more which could be done to activate the whole area. So if you look at it, you see a huge amount of stuff coming in to make this happen. And uh, Pankaj, next. Therefore, the shampoo phenomena soon migrated into skincare. It migrated into flexible use, multi-use packs with Fair and Lovely and brands like Close Up, which use that around, and onwards into pickles, spices. And you know, the epitome of this to me was in telecom, where once in Hyderabad, I found a small pack, which was the pack which was available from midnight to six o'clock. And the retailer said it's a honeymoon pack, but priced at one rupees. That was another example of these packs going through. And these packs really made growth happen because of key shifts which took place in this. But there's one shift which I'd like to talk in detail for which I couldn't get a visual. And that's the one at the bottom, which is a shift in mission energy. So for a long time, even a company as large as Unilever was totally focused on selling sachets. Right? Uh, similarly, at Britannia, selling to these new channels and getting new things to give growth was a big part of the focus of the company. So getting that focus was a huge amount of uh, thing of making it happen. And everybody's mind every day was on this like counting how many sashes were visible in an outlet, et cetera, et cetera. But I just like to take a minute, even at the risk of exceeding the time, of talking about a little example. And this involves uh, one of our best salespeople, and he was based out of Chennai, uh, Sir John, as I would call him. Uh, he used to sell where we were growing, doubling every year. We were uh, in under a scheme, probably selling three times the monthly average but he was highly dissatisfied and said, no, next month, I'm going to sell seven times my monthly average, come what may. And he forced everybody to push things like hell in the marketplace, but most importantly, he made the entire head office land up in Chennai and get to sell, et cetera, et cetera. And ultimately did somehow manage to cross the seven times sale. The importance of this wasn't the extra sale. The importance of this was it broke shackles in the mind. And energized not only for that month, but for many more years, not only the teams in Chennai, but teams across the country to get this going. So mission energy is another big part of what made this 10x growth happen. But look at what came out of all of this. Firstly, the impact. And if I took shampoos alone, 
I couldn't put a number exactly to it because I don't have the latest numbers, but I did backtrack and check. And the growth there is a thousand X. Yes, it's a more extended period of time, but certainly much more than 10 X, even at short periods of time. This has resulted in a buildup of categories. Today, a lot of categories owe their existence and the scale and size to the growth packs, which have really grown them enormously. Uh, for example, shampoo penetration has from around 5 to 10%, increased to almost around 70, 80%. And consumption levels have grown up dramatically. Equally, the impact of this has been that this is now the new market normal, and not only in India, in many other countries. So this growth case is the case which I thought I would share with you. But am I making a case for you to launch low unit price packs? Am I suggesting to you to do packaging innovation? Uh, to some extent, yes. And if it's relevant and applicable, certainly. But the bigger thing I'd like to do is to draw out some things which I felt were important, which may work even in your specific context. Uh, I hope that would apply. <clears throat> so, you know, this whole thing um, about the <clears throat> small packs and growth is that it is not about bravado. So 10x growth is not about bravado. Uh, it is about something even more fundamental. Pankaj, next. You know, it's about finding a growth source. It is central to it. Uh, I have not by accident used the word sroth. The meaning in Sanskrit is far more powerful than source. It's almost a fountainhead. It is really the root source of getting the 10x growth. In this particular case of low unit price packs, which I'm labeling as such, the growth source is really about tapping into that huge sense of demand, which goes beyond what has already been tapped. And I've used this picture of a typical family from semi-urban rural India, which at that time certainly had a desire for long shiny hair, certainly would like great skin, but never used products. And really that growth source is what energized the 10x growth we saw in this particular space. Uh, Pankaj, next. So if you look at it, reaching this demand beyond the barriers was the idea through low unit price packs, which tapped into this, right? And this idea, which tapped the growth source, which I talked about, is really what paid off in a big way, but with another component which made it work, Pankaj next. And that was the little circles in red, which we'd seen examples of, which was a full mix, which really made distribution work like hell, which made manufacturing shift to a new gear, which made activation ride and mission energy propel all of this, so as to break the barrier and unleash the 10x growth. Now, the growth source, which is fundamental, there's not only one, there are many others. And I'll just like to illustrate one more, which a lot of companies have used. So, for example, the idea in the second one is about wherever you are, people will eat. So, whether you're in an office, you eat. When you are going out, you eat. Kids eat when they're coming back from school. So, really, the idea for this has reflected in a lot of channels. And the photograph I showed to you of the kids was really tapping into the growth source of you know, uh, kids and schools. Kids' nutrition went there. Similarly, there is a lot of stuff here because institutional sales and selling to offices propelled more of it. Similarly, uh, companies like Pepsi go into transit clusters where a lot of people go for recreation and they gobble up drinks. So that growth source of trying to tap into people who are everywhere and anywhere and eat and uh, using the thought of consumption points leads to mixes of that. And similarly, there are other growth sources 
and other ideas which are there. But the point I'm trying to make to you that it is central for us to be clear what is our growth source. I think the other point I'd like to make is we will not get exceptional shifts by doing the same thing again and again. And here I'd like Pankaj to move to the next slide. The second fundamental is that of disruption. So if you want TEDx growth, there has to be disruption. Part of the disruption, and disruption comes at many levels, some big, some small, but equally valuable, all of them. Design and improving design is a disruption, it is something which changes and provides a positive discontinuity. Similarly, innovation is one. And the four examples of manufacturing, distribution, a product, and even activation are examples of innovation and discontinuity which have driven the 10x growth. So this is not only about product innovation. This is about discontinuity, a positive discontinuity in anything and everything we do. And this can affect large brands, small brands, wherever. Of course, as we move into times like today, where technology and changing things have made far more fundamental disruption happen. So I know of companies and brands, even in the personal care space, which have grown from 15 crores to 500 crores, within a span of two to three years using the digital medium. Disruption is not only about thematic or you know, design or things like that. Disruption has to be delivered. And therefore, part of my axiom for disruption is driving and delivering disruption. Uh, and that can be as critical, and some of it uses the mission energy we talked about. Because it's not about just thinking about this and doing it in stages. So I remember in some stage, somebody said, look, we've changed that. We've totally innovated in a very different form of packaging and we can do things at 10 times the speed. But we implemented it only in 5% of our factory. No, that's not disruption. Uh, so driving it and delivering it is a very critical part of disruption. And it is, in my view, the second fundamental I'd like to share with you. I think the third one uh, is partly rooted uh, in this popular film. Uh, unfortunately, I don't remember the name. Uh, so it's about Hosh and Josh. right? If you really want 10x growth, you need both Hosh and Josh. And I'd just like to share with you uh, two, or three simple three, two or three simple dimensions of where it expresses itself. The first one here is winning in the trenches is winning strategically. When you fight and win in one market, one street, it's as valuable and it is as strategic as some of the mixed development which I was talking about. Because what each win gives you is a scale and a profit leverage like nothing else. What each win gives you is a momentum which accelerates the rate of change and helps you get 10x. What each one win gives you is new learning, which strengthens you around. So winning in the trenches is winning strategically, and both are important. I think at one level, uh, I have in the previous set of slides uh, talked about you know, things which clarify why, what is the strategy for growth, how will we do it, and yes, it is important. But often that kind of a why begins with a why not. It's like saying, why not can I grow 10 times my current rate? That dissatisfaction leads you to think of why you can. So the point I'd like to build to you is the hosh of how will you grow is often triggered off by the josh of why the hell will you not grow? You can also look at it from another angle. Uh, that angle is yes, that of focusing, administering, and doing stuff well and properly with process. And they play an important role in making sure implementation gets done well and properly across. But at the same time, the chaos of straying into new areas, looking at things naively, gives a unique energy to building 10x growth. But whichever way you look at it, the third principle is that of Hosh and Josh. 
So what I'd like to do is close with this, Pankaj next. I have found that these three pivots, principles, whatever you'd like to call them, are critical for 10x. I have greatly enjoyed uh, getting 10x growth. And I do hope you may be able to apply some of this to find your passion and your growth, uh, which is 10x, maybe more. Thank you. Over to Pankaj. Thanks, uh, Neeraj. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks, uh, NC. Thanks, Neeraj. Uh, Group Captain, over to you for any questions that you may have got uh, uh, from the audiences, either through this channel or any other uh, channel. All those who are in the chat box, you, you can uh, Thank you so much, sir, for a lovely evening. We had over 1,350 viewers watching this program live. And we've got a couple of questions from the YouTube. One question, uh, I also request the people in the chat box, uh, uh, if you have any question, you can type your question so that uh, the panelists will be more than happy to uh, address your questions. Now, there's a question which has come from YouTube. We are is it building trust. Is it uh, a special measure strategy adopted by you to build trust? Because this is one which is really, really taken a beat in recent banking sector. So what's your view on this? Who, who, who is he addressing? Soro. I think it is Soro. You spoke about trust in SGFC Bank. So. Yeah, banking sector. Yeah. 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 So the context of trust, as the question uh, rightly says, has been broken, especially more recently. And well, banking is a culprit, but I would argue not only banking. Uh, it takes a long time to build trust. And if you look at uh, the wider HDFC group itself, uh, and that philosophy has has percolated down into uh, all the group companies. Uh, it has been built on offering transparent, honest products at one level, and uh, uh, in financial services, transparency is a big builder of trust uh, because it tends to be complicated products. And there's there can be many ways of manipulating communication and understanding of products which can be you know, uh, missold. So one of the key elements is transparency. And that is a philosophy that you have to build very consciously. I could go into details of a few instances where leadership has to take a call, where uh, uh, industry practice uh, allows you to get away with lack of transparency. But you say that, look, if you are this kind of a company or this kind of a brand, you will not do it. And those decisions, I have seen some at close quarters have happened, may not happen, have happened all the time. They could have happened, but directionally, that's a way to, uh, it, it, what I'm trying to say is that senior leadership has to engage with that question if you have to build a brand on trust. Thank you. Dear Chandra, you would like to share your thoughts because trust is the one thing which is fundamental to any business, what you do. Uh, would you like to share some thoughts on this, uh, Neeraj? Sure. Uh, you know, trust has uh, degrees of importance in different industries, but it's a common factor. So uh, in the financial space, it's very high. But even if you go to a retail store, uh, people want to go there and again and again because they have a certain faith in the quality of products there, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it is something which is a fairly widespread thing, uh, in particular, if it's of any consequence to you. The thing is that trust also has many manifestations. At one level, it's a very placid thing, which is they will give me the quality which they have said. That's one type of thing. It can also be a very active form of trust that I can rely upon them to solve my problem if I run into trouble. So trust has varied dimensions and really building it is extremely critical. Yes, part of it builds with time, but part of it builds with the actions you take to build the trust. Uh, so that's what I'd like to say. Of course, it's a big thing and specific examples would have to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mdirat. Uh, here is again a question from the Facebook we were, uh, before I go to the chat box. Uh, profitability as a culture from day one. How do you ensure when we have a stiff competition uh, among the peer group uh, and uh, you know there's so much is to be done, uh, the pressure for growth, so how do you ensure profitability all the time 
and also some you want to say how do you take uh, e-commerce there the people only look at the valuation than the profitability so how do you balance between these two who is he addressing it is the neeraj you told me profitability from day one i think so the question should go to you yeah, yeah. i i made that point i made that point no so i will not uh, uh, I'll, i'll go in the reverse order uh, uh, e-commerce is a different business so context is very different uh, very different for uh for the philosophy that i espoused uh, though i would argue personally and i may be old school that even in e-commerce there is merit in keeping the discipline because the discipline is important as you build the organization out as long as you know when you're going to get profitable that may work for e-commerce but specifically uh, in terms of what do you do uh, uh, i'll take an example uh a new entrant happened uh, in a in a business that i was in at hcc bank at that point of time auto loans uh, uh, undercutting of interest rates uh, such that the business line had become unprofitable and uh, several banks decided to get out of the business almost all nbfcs got out of the business leaving only a few banks in the business hcc bank had that option uh, because aditya who was my boss was extremely profitable driven the question was he forced us to think and say how do you make money in a business where the individual loan is loss making and then you had to find the right ecosystem which was which you could cultivate through auto loans which meant say sme loans to the auto dealers to inventory financing to see it holistically and say what you could do in that ecosystem to generate profit so it forces you to think so what i meant by culture of profitability is if you if there if somebody else can can find a way to make money you should be able to as well unless fundamentally you got your business models wrong but if you go and get lazy about it then you will not challenge yourself and that laziness is the point about e-commerce also so it may not be required to be profitable from day one but the danger is laziness uh, so you should not accept lack of profitability as the answer Uh, is what is the point I was trying to make? I'd like to share uh, some example which I have uh, on a company I've admired for long, and this is for for leading Amazon globally. So on profitability, so I'll give an example. Amazon for a long time has had the culture of not having PPTs, but you have to if you have to propose a any new initiative, you start by writing a press release. The press release is what you say that what will it you will release to the stock market. So that profitability thinking. is there that i propose to do this and this will lead to that financially and that's how it will be so that financial thinking is embedded in this amazon a global amazon and at the same time they have a very very their mission is to be the most customer friendly organization in the world and this was written 15 years back so they balance that and they also had a very tough work culture for a very long time so balancing all that uh, companies innovate and that's why there's one amazon and there's one jeff bezos but that's what innovation does there's a question addressed to me so i think nkp is i think kotesh uh, hi yes. kotesh yeah uh, so the question that an insurance penetration yes it's picked up but do i been out of the industry for some time uh, it is more penet it's more protection kind of products now earlier it was mix of protection and savings it is picking up online is big also but yes it could grow more your point on 10x growth very well for small companies is yes you're right let's take hdfc banks example for example first 15 20 years they used to grow 30% per quarter and then at a point 25 and down to 20 but they managed to grow levers another giant uh, has has its phases of growing uh, right uh, so so yes you're right the numbers may go down but they will be in a given sector some companies which can grow faster than the rest of the companies but principles uh, neeraj's examples are born out of britannia and unilever among the biggest companies in their respective sector uh, right so you're right and slow down with the principles will hold so hopefully many of our younger audiences can continue to apply them okay there's another question from uh, rashini we'll take the last question would you like to read that question uh, investors need to integrate in the same chat box this come from uh, rashini kartik i think again to- for neeraj investors need integrated reporting for investing even for simple investment banking process will provide integrated is there talks in that regard it's a technical question around banking 
uh, though Neeraj uh, would be best placed. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not very sure uh, exactly what uh, Rahini has in mind. Uh, but yes, uh, if you're talking about uh, integrated reporting uh, through banking processes, I'm not very sure. So uh, I'm taking the question to to understand that uh, uh, you know the banks giving loans require greater degree of uh, transparency and uh, clarity and accounts. Uh, then yes, uh, to that extent. Can I request I need to ask this question slightly more specifically? Maybe I'm not getting the question clearly. I'm happy to take this question offline as well, Raini. I mean, if you are uh, hearing me. Uh... Thank you, sir. I think uh, now we are almost come to the end of uh, session time. And now I may request Balraman for his closing comments, sir. Mr. Balraman. Well, uh, achieving 10x uh, uh, sales is a very, very uh, inspirational, exciting objective. But that it requires uh, very hard work detailed planning and uh, excellent exact execution uh, and uh, which means a lot of discipline and uh, uh, innovation disruption as uh, uh, Neera Chandra said, it's become very clear and uh, thank you gentlemen. I think uh, we need uh, several sessions to explore this out in very, very full detail and uh, we will try and see how to do that uh, over a period of time. Th thank you, uh, Pankaj, for the uh, excellent uh, ca catalyzing idea. And thank you, Neeraj Swaroop, for uh, uh, adding on to, uh, adding bank, bank assurance onto <laughs> insurance. And uh, uh, thank you, Neeraj Chandra, for uh, uh, you know, your very original marketing thoughts. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Your feedback is uh, very important to us. Please do share your feedback. Uh, as a token of our appreciation, which uh, as a practice we've been doing at MMA, uh, we would like to present... Uh, yes. Uh, in the face mask, uh, on the behalf of the people who are in need, uh, we go around, the MMA team goes around and distribute this mask. And uh, thank you for accepting our uh, offer to do this on your behalf. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, uh, gentlemen, uh, for the excellent evening. As Mr. Baldaman said, we need a couple of more sessions to understand, take it to a larger perspective on this thing. And really, we really enjoyed uh, hosting this as much as yeah, so many people enjoy watching this. Thanks so much. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Till we meet again. Bye-bye. Good night. Sir. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Pankaj. It was an excellent presentation. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vivi, sir. Thanks, Group Captain and Neeraj. Thank you, Pankaj. Thank you so much. The Bye, audience. Neeraj. No, thank you. Thank, thank you, Pankaj. Okay. Bye. Take care. Bye, Mr. Balaram. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.